In this module, I'm going to walk you through a Gaussian dispersion model that is used to model air pollution transport downwind of a stationary source. For any given plume, one of the most common questions if you have a house downwind of that plume is what is the concentration that I will be experiencing at my home downwind of this? And this is given a symbol in the model we're going to be covering of big X for concentration downwind at a given point. Dispersion models are used by state agencies and by local governments to predict concentrations of air pollutants for given point source dischargers. These are estimates that are based on empirical models. An empirical model is a model in which real data from a given location is used to extrapolate relationships. Empirical models have many limitations because you need to match up your site with the original field data site that the model is based upon. In general though, the dispersion of air pollution is a function of four major factors. The first is called the effective stack height, which is going to be the symbol H. The effective stack height is the height at which the plume rises together with the physical stack height. So if you have a stationary source, the plume is going to rise up before it begins to be transported horizontally. This is the physical stack height, the difference of the plume height, and that together is the effective stack height. The effective stack height is going to increase with the exit velocity of the pollution and the exit temperature because warm air rises. The dispersion of the pollution is also going to be a function of the mass rate of emission of the pollutant. So if we ultimately want to know the concentration downwind, that will be increased by the amount of mass that is put into the atmosphere. The third major factor is the wind speed and direction. Increased wind speed decreases the plume rise but increases the dilution. And the fourth factor is atmospheric stability. An unstable atmosphere is going to increase the dilution factor, whereas inversions created by stable atmospheres will restrict vertical dilution and potentially increase the concentration downwind. The model we're going to review in this course is called the Gaussian Plume Model. It is a simple dispersion model that is only applicable to point sources of conservative or non-reactive gases and particles that are too fine to settle. So gravity is not going to be a major factor in the motion of particulate matter if you apply this model. There are many assumptions to the model. Again, this is a simple model, and in reality, um, models that get used are much more complicated. Some of the assumptions here are that the emission rate is constant. It's not a dynamic model. The stability can be adequately represented by meteorological data. Crosswinds are minimal. Terrain is flat near the surface. The plume is reflected back into the atmosphere when it hits the ground. So we're going to model things like this, where the plume is reflected back or stays, but there's no absorption to the, or major sink to the land surface. And so this is the coordinate system we'll focus on. You have your stationary source here. You have your plume, which is a function of the effective height is where the plume begins to move in the horizontal distance. It goes in the x direction here. It also moves in a y direction and a z direction. And so it will fan out in three dimensions as it moves away from the stationary plume. The center line here is the coordinate upon which this is all based. The equation that represents this model is given here. Big X is the ground level concentration of a pollutant at a given point XY downwind from the stack of an effective height big H. You'll see here that you have the emission rate of the pollutant E, you have the wind speed, 
at the location, you have the coordinates y, and then you have some standard deviation terms, s of y and s of z. So to solve for this equation, you need to find s of y and s of z. So there's a nested equations here to find these. In order to find these, these are going to be a function of the stability of the atmosphere. So you first need to find the stability class of your local atmosphere. And to do that, you'll use this table here, which shows you the wind speed at the given time of day or night. And depending on whether you have strong radiation or if it's overcast at day or night at a given wind speed, you're going to choose a stability class A through F. One thing I want to point out here is that any overcast day or any thinly overcast day is going to be given the stability class D for neutral stability. Once you find the stability class, you can find S of Z and S of Y. As long as you have H that was given the effective stack height and wind speed mu. If these were not given, you will need to solve for these as well. If you need to solve for the effective stack height, you can do so by knowing the physical stack height, which is little h, and then you'll solve for the rise of the plume, which will be a function of velocity of the emission and of temperature. And so here you have the effective height, that change of h, or the rise of the plume, equals the stack velocity, so what's coming out of the stack, the stack diameter, the wind speed, which will carry that, the pressure, and stack temperature. Please note that the temperatures here are expressed as Kelvin. If you need to solve for the wind speed, you can do so with this relationship. This is commonly performed if you have wind speed at a weather tower that is not at the same location or that is not at the same height. So if you have wind speed data from a weather tower that was obtained at one elevation, you can use a, a relationship to solve for the wind speed at a second elevation, Z2. The relationship that's given in your textbook is mu2, which is your desired elevation, is a function of the wind speed at the first elevation times the elevation difference to an exponent p. And this is an empirical factor. So these relationships were obtained from real data to give you an idea of this relationship. For a given stability class, you will decide if it's a rural or an urban community, and you'll come over. If this is stability class A in an urban environment, you would use a p-value of 0.15 to solve for your wind speed at that elevation. Okay, so just to remind you, what we're headed for is to plug in everything into this simple, into this equation. So E is something that you would have to know, emission rate, and wind speed. If you don't know wind speed at your elevation Z, what I just showed you is a way to derive that. If you don't know your effective stack height, I showed you a way to solve for that. And now I'm going to show you how to find S of Y and S of Z. The equations for these are provided here. And again, these are based off of coefficients that were empirically derived to create relationships, and they're a function of stability class. So for stability class A again, you would come over and you would read this line, and you would determine if your location downwind in the x direction is less than or greater than one kilometer. And so if it's greater than one kilometer, you're going to use C, D, and F exponents here. And if it's less than one kilometer, kilometer, you'll use them in this series of columns. The A is the same for all. 
These equations here were based on regression analysis from data that was obtained in the field. In your textbook, they show you these pictures here of the relationship as, of s of y, which is the standard deviation in the y direction, downwind. We would expect as the plume leaves that the plume would expand out in the y and z direction away from the plume. So the distance downwind is the x distance in the x direction, and the s of y is the standard, de standard deviation in the y direction. And you'll see that the deviation increases as you move downwind as the plume expands. So this data would have been obtained in the field, and then an equation would have been fitted to each of these lines to provide the exponents for the equations that you're given in the previous slide. The same is true of the standard deviation in the s of z direction, or the z direction. Distance downwind is the x direction, and we expect that the standard deviation increases as you move downwind, and that that is a function of the local stability of the atmosphere. Now, if an inversion is present, the Gaussian plume model simplifies. If an inversion is present, we have the situation shown here where the plume hits a vertical limit for vertical motion, and we say that that occurs at a distance x of l away from the stationary source. At a distance x of l, we expect that the pollution plume begins to disperse downward, and theoretically at 2x of l, we say that the plume is completely mixed in the atmospheric column. If an inversion is present, we expect that x of l occurs where the standard deviation in the z direction is equal to 0.47 times l minus h. And l is the distance to the inversion in the z direction. If you have the inversion situation, the Gaussian plume model simplifies to this form of the equation, where the concentration, big X, of the pollution downwind is equal to the emission rate divided by 2 pi, 1 half, S of y, mu, and L. You could use the same relationship to solve for mu at a given z, and it's only a function of the standard deviation in the y direction, S of y not s of z anymore. When considering an inversion or a plume that follows an inversion, you'll want to determine if your x or your position downwind in the x direction is less than or greater than 2xl. And whether you're standing here as your x or here determines which equation you'll use for the concentration at that location. So if x is less than 2xl, you will use the long form. If x is greater than 2xl, you'll use the abbreviated or short form. And the equations are both for x, so the short form is the one shown here. To determine if your distance is less than or greater to 2xl, you'll determine the distance to xl using the s of z format shown in the previous slide. So we use this equation, s of z, to determine where xl is. Let me show you that. So for that inversion equation, s of z equals 0.47 l minus h. If you know l and you know h, you'll solve for s of z. And let's say that you solve for it at 30 meters with a stability class of a. So if you use this plot here, you can find 30 meters, and you can come over to stability class A, and you'll come down. And you might estimate that x here is equal to 0.22 kilometers. And I want you to understand that you start with meters, but you get kilometers out. So the x here is xl, and that is equal to 0.22 kilometers. And so 2xl is equal to 0.44 kilometers, roughly. And so if you know that, you can come back and you can say, is the x where I'm standing that I want to find the effective concentration less than or equal to 0.44 kilometers? 
and that will tell you which equation you'll be using.